Hi, good morning. Today we are out marking, um, we're using these step-in posts, marking where we want to have the borders of our rotational grazing system for our calves. Chris and Leslie are over there marking that side, I'm marking this side, and then once we get it kind of laid out where we want it, we're going to come back in with some metal T posts, and then these in between them, and then we'll get the wires all hooked up and be good to go. Alright, Leslie, so what we're doing, this is going to be our gate area, uh -huh. meaning where each one of these white sticks is, we'll have a T-pole like this. Mm -hmm. We'll have a line running all the way across here with those interspersed between. And then here, it'll wrap around and connect to that one. And we want to move the cows, or if we need to go through to move the water truck, we just unhook that one section right there. So we have a gate on each paddock, and that just makes it easy to move the cows back and forth. So we'll start them, you know, if we start them down there, and then we'll move them up to this one next week. And then the next week we'll open this gate, we'll put some grain up here, they'll move right in here, we'll close the gate behind them. We made it wide enough so we can drive the truck through if we need to. So that's what we're working on. Stop. About another three inches is all you need. fencing this is our these white tea poles this is our little quarter acre section up here and then Carter's bringing me the post we're gonna do the next section down there and Chris is practicing his javelin skills We have the outside perimeter of our grazing area up and Chris is working on our gate here at the lower end of the pasture. All right, Chris, how do these tensioners work? Oh, they're pretty simple. You just roll it up like a fishing reel here. Mm -hmm. Once you got about as tight as you think you're going to need it. Lower. I mean tighter and then lower because you were doing oh. it up above the fence. Yeah, I think that's about as tight as I can get it. Okay. Then you slip your... Uh, I'm wondering if we did it near to a post, if maybe it wouldn't drop so much because that's still... Oh, well, that's not too bad. That's yeah. looking pretty good. Looking real good. All right. All right. Very easy. All right, Carter and I will do a couple. Sounds good. All right, so we've got these warning signs here. So should anyone happen by that doesn't know what this red and white pretty wire does, they will be careful not to shock themselves on it. All right, so here's our gate. It's going to hook on here just like this. And I'm going to tie the poly wire to it. We'll see how good of a knot tire I am. And then I'll just tighten this up. Like so. That's still not very tight. There we go. And then before I clip it, thank you, Leslie, I'm just going to do a little knot here in this rope so that it can't um, just slide back out through the other part. 
like that and then I'll cut this with it leaving a little bit extra there we go hold that please and then this will just unhook like that and that'll be our gate okay moving on When I tied in the cross fencing, I had to make sure that this poly wire touches this poly wire of the exterior fence because it doesn't make a complete circuit. So it, as long as wire touches wire, anything will be hot once we activate it. Of course, it's not turned on while we're working with it. But that's how this section will uh, become electrified is because it's touching right here where I tied them together. When Lucy gets out there, the chickens start following. The cows are going where, to where the trough was. Do your hay cow call. Hey cow! Chickens know what that means. I'm the cow and I'm escaping. Hey Carter. When the cows walk, their back is up here. Your back is way down there. That may be true, but when they lie down, they're going to be down here. So you think what, they're going to roll under it like Kevin James style in Mall Cop? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, we went with the one wire at 36 inches, which is average cow height. And uh, one of our calves went right under, so now we're adding the second wire down Told here. Told ya. He didn't even have to roll. Here are the calves, happy in their new enclosure. In a week, we'll move them up there to that one. And we've hung these little, um, I guess they're, we just call them zanglies. I don't know what they are from the gates, we go. so they don't go under. And I uh, think we're good for that. Chewy's going under without any problem. That's good. So pretty happy about the way it is. I ran out of yellow, these yellow clips that we use to keep it off the poles. So I'll run the, um, I have one more cross fence to do up there. One or two. I guess just one more. Totally really need one more clip, we'll be good. And we gotta do the other gates. Yeah, and then we need to hang the danglings on two more gates. So, one more gate. No, two more, because we got the one over there. Oh, and we need to go from that gate up to the hill. So, we're close to done. Two more paddocks to work on, but at least I've got two weeks worth of paddocks. And these guys, we poured grain in their trough and they just completely ignored it. One of them came and kind of nibbled at it and the rest of them are like, grass, yay. So, we've got some grass-fed beef we're raising. Stay tuned in part 4 of this video series where we'll break down the itemized cost to give you a better idea of what to expect when you establish your rotational grazing system.